Good morning. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Friday again. Now we're in April. How mad is that? I don't know where the time goes. They do say as you get older, time goes quicker. Pretty sure it's on fast forward at the moment. But hey ho. So good morning, welcome, welcome. As usual, if you're watching, do pop a hello in the comments so that I can be very polite and follow my manners and say hello back. And know that I'm not sitting here on my own, which, you know, I can deal with <laughs> my own company. Talking to myself, you get the best answers. <laughs> Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Carla. Good morning, Jeanette. But yeah, it's uh, it'd be a bit sad sitting here talking to myself. Wouldn't it? But there you go. Good morning, Kay. Good morning, Jay. Rhyming names. Good morning, Lani. Good morning, Rachel. Uh, oh, uh, which is uh, which is market today, isn't it? I believe on Facebook, uh, Rachel. If you want to pop the link to the which is market in the comments, that would be very useful. Online market, lots and lots of lovely traders selling lots and lots of lovely things. Uh, so do hop on over there on Facebook um, and have a look at all the goodies. Good morning, Will. Good morning, husband. <laughs> Can you tell we're in different parts of the house now? <laughs> oh, it's tomorrow, is it? Which is markets tomorrow? Excellent. Do find it on Facebook. It, there's lots and lots of lovely things. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, Jess. Which is market? There you go. Which is with a W Y T C H E S. Which is market on Facebook tomorrow? Lots and lots of lovelies. Uh, oh, look, there's a link. Look at that. The pixie's at work. Good morning, Xenia. Uh, yes, I am up here and, and Pete and Eric are downstairs. Teenage boy is also up as well, which is quite bizarre. <laughs> on, a, on a bank holiday. Uh, he was up before us this morning. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. So lovely to be joining you again. Highlight of my week, Chan, with you guys. It doesn't matter how I feel or what mood I'm in. Friday mornings, you guys always pick me up. So thank you so much for that. It is fabulous chatting with you guys. And as always, do put your insights, your thoughts, your questions, your comments, anything in the comments there. And we'll uh, have a bit of interaction. Denise is doing the coffee run for work. Excellent. Mine's a caramel latte, Denise. <laughs> um, heavy on the caramel, light on the actual coffee. <laughs> Lani says, Zoe's still asleep. She told me that she wasn't planning on getting up till 12 noon. <laughs> oh, there's a teenager for you. There's a teenager. Good morning, Baz. Now, I had got a note here to mention uh, the Sillers of Spring and Mist are doing a gig tonight. Baz, if you want to put a link in the comments, please do feel free to do so. Um, this evening, eight o'clock, I think, uh, doing a live gig for everyone with um, lots of lovely pagan, steampunky, rock type music. Absolutely fabulous. Do join them for their live this evening. Good morning, Paul, over in Japan. Ah, is, are all the blossoms out, Paul? Uh, we've got some cherry blossoms out in the England at the moment. I'm assuming Japan, all of theirs will have started too. Uh, Maria, Jazz was up making herself breakfast when I got up. What is, what is it with these teenagers on a bank holiday? Pass this standby. Do have a look in the comments for the link to the Sillers uh, live music fest this evening. Definitely well worth a visit. Lovely, lovely people. Very, very talented musicians. Uh, something to brighten your evening, definitely. So I thought this morning, as we've had a couple of weeks of talking about um, heavy stuff, <laughs> I thought this morning we'd look at working some magic. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, Sue. Um, Jane says it's Good Friday, all the teenagers are being good. What in the hope that they get chocolate eggs? No chocolate eggs in this house, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
he might get a toasted cheese and ham sandwich because that's his favorite. <laughs> Uh, Paul says blossoms are out in the Tokyo area in my area a few more weeks to wait okay if you love tree blossom over in Japan they have whole festivals I believe Paul don't they but it looks amazing the photos are amazing puts their little cherry tree blossoms to shame really <laughs> Lani has Amy sat opposite me in Amy town also known as her play corner fabulous this is my play corner <laughs> sitting in my play corner today <laughs> we should all have a play corner definitely definitely um excellent so yes yeah, so today i thought i would chat about da -da -da -da, feathers i just happened to pick up the peacock ones first and there's a lot of folklore about peacock feathers but i thought what are the things that I work magic with mostly? And they are natural items. They are um, anything that I pick up for free from nature, generally. <laughs> Zenia misses Eric sitting beside me. He's not allowed upstairs, Zenia, because he can't get down the stairs. <laughs> His little legs struggle with going up the stairs but he really struggles going down the stairs and we're worried that he might fall down them. So we don't generally bring him upstairs, um, but we are, we're, we're practicing, <laughs> but he's quite happy. There you go. There is a link to the Silla's uh, event this evening. A uh, bit of spring and miss music. It's over on their YouTube channel. Do hop on over eight o'clock this evening. I think it's eight o'clock. That's right. Isn't it? Uh, and have a listen. Fab, fab music. Fabulous music. So I did have a think about what I work with and mostly I work with natural items. So I am going to look at feathers today. If you've got any questions, comments or thoughts as you're going through, as we're going through, do pop them in the comments and we will uh, have a bit of interaction. So I've always been gifted with feathers. Don't know about you guys. They're one of the things that I find most usually pigeon ones we get a lot of pigeons in the garden much to eric's annoyance he does like to bark at them and go running out into the garden chasing barking to see them off the pigeons just jump up onto the top of the fence and look at him with disdain really <laughs> he barks he's seen them off he comes sauntering back down the garden looking all hard and you know job done <laughs> but they do gift me with feathers and Pigeons, generally, their magical properties align with that of doves. So if you've got pigeon feathers, then you've got the magic of dove as well, which is all about peace and calm. If I'm gifted a pigeon feather, it's normally because I need to find that peace and calm in what I'm doing. Um, it's a bit of a sign for me. Most feathers are signs or messages or gifts for you to work some magic with. Um, I've been given crow once on occasion and I have I have got some magpie feathers too. If you are uh, if you don't want to see a whole magpie wing, look away now. I am going to hold a magpie wing, a whole magpie wing up. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful colours on the magpie wings. I will tell you about these in a moment, but I am gifted with magpie feathers on occasion. Magpie is one of my spirit animal guides, and I'm also gifted with seagull feathers. We live a few minutes from the ocean, so seagulls drop their feathers for me occasionally. Another one of my animal spirit guides, usually seagull comes if I'm dealing with something emotional. Um, but I have to say seagulls are probably one of my favourites. <clears throat> but whatever the type of feathers they are, they carry a very special magic with them. Uh, Christine says, my dogs love to chew on them. Yes. <laughs> we get lots of wood pigeon feathers in the garden. Yes. If Eric gets hold of a feather, it's decimated within seconds. Maria says they're still magical pigeon feathers. They are, absolutely. All feathers are magical, whether it is a pigeon or a crow or a raven or a turkey. They're all magical. Uh, Maria says there's one in her garden. We do get pigeons quite a lot. I should, you're a London, Maria, aren't you? I should imagine you get quite a lot of pigeons. Jane says our cat, Sandra. That's such a good name for a cat. 
found the lovely speckled feather once. She brought it in and placed it carefully at the feet of her sister. Oh, bless. <laughs> Fantastic. Good morning, Leslie. <laughs> Jane says the magpie wing reminds her of Elvis's hair. It does. <laughs> I've never thought about that. Never thought about that. Thank you very much. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Good morning, Kay. Maria loves magpies. Yes, I do. I do work with them on occasion. They are naughty, but they are fantastic creatures to work with. Uh, Xenia says, I love feathers. Sadly, I've had a moth problem. I get mad when they eat my precious feathers. Oh, I didn't know moths ate feathers. Oh, interesting. I don't, I haven't had moths, so luckily. So uh, Xenia had Al, Jay, and yeah, lots of beautiful feathers. Kay has a magpie's nesting in the trees at the bottom of the garden and a pigeon. Yeah, good old pigeon. Lani says, how can you identify a crow feather? Are they much different to raven feathers? I would imagine they're very, very similar. Ravens tend to be bigger, don't they? Um, I don't have a raven feather to compare, so I don't know. We'll have to look that one up, Lani. I know ravens are bigger than crows, aren't they? Xenia says, lovely magpie wing. I love magpies so much for me. They're luck bringing birds. I often find that magpies, they do come into a garden on occasion. And I do find that magpies are there um, when there's a bit of mischief going on because they do like that. <laughs> Christine says, I swear I'm going to pluck feathers from this jackdaw we have. Keeps putting sticks and rubbish down our chimney. <laughs> Um, I've only ever seen jackdaws when I've been down in Cornwall. We don't get them in this area, um, but fantastic creatures. Good morning, Melody. Uh, Maria says we have quite a lot of magpies too. One used to follow my son around. They do have a fantastic noise, magpies, don't they? If you like watching Midsummer Murders on the television, they've always got magpies in the soundtrack in the background. It makes me laugh every time I hear it. Xenia says, moths eat fur, wool and feathers. I knew they ate wet, uh, wool and fur. I didn't realise they ate feathers. That's a bit That's a bit of a, what's it? Uh, Kay, what's the myth of saluting to magpies? I, it's an old folklore, isn't it? I always salute to the magpie. I always salute the magpie, say good morning and ask how the family is. It's folklore. <laughs> I think magpies do, they do tend to have a bit of bad luck to them, don't they? Or, or a reputation for bad luck. And by saluting and saying good morning to them, you're dispelling the bad luck. Um, that's the folklore behind it. Jane, why can't they eat plants like other crops? <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't know is the answer to that one. I'm assuming it's a particular type of moth that eats the clothing. But there you go. Uh, Xenia, these moths eat everything that contains keratin. Oh, there you go. Quite specific with their food needs then. <laughs> so lots of feathers gifted. I have got a swan, very tiny swan feather as well. I've actually got a huge um, vase full of seagull feathers. There's a crow one in there. There's some magpie ones in there. There's some, there's a turkey one in there. There's a swan one. I can't find it. Ever since I moved everything upstairs, it's gone. So it'll turn up at some point, but, you know, it's hiding for the moment. Uh, Kay, I heard if you see one magpie, you should salute. I think there goes back, there's a there's the poem, isn't there, um, about counting magpies. And one magpie is supposed to be unlucky, isn't it? So saluting it and saying, you know, they are, Christine says, one for sorrow, two for joy, three for girl, four for a boy. I always say that when I see them. So, yes, I think one magpie is supposed to be unlucky, isn't it? So saluting and saying good morning to it uh, is supposed to dispel that bad luck. Dawn has three gorgeous jackdaws that come to my bird table every day. They are, love them so magical. Yes, beautiful birds. Jane, once I started buying acrylic instead of wool, the moths moved into the porridge box. <laughs> How bizarre. It's like the three bears and put moths. <laughs> uh, Maria, I don't salute anymore. I just speak to them and get weird looks. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too, Maria. Got to be done, though. 
uh, Teresa, we have hundreds of jackdaws here in South Wales. Yeah, I think there must be specific areas for them. I've never seen one in Hampshire, never seen one. Good morning, Caroline. Xenia, I read somewhere that in China, magpies are considered as luck bringing and the magpie is a symbol of the Ming dynasty. That's it, isn't it? I mean, animals and birds are all, they're all seen in different lights across the country, no matter where you are. Um, Sue, I expect it will turn up. Your book of shadows did, yes. Things in this house do have a habit of disappearing and then turning up randomly. So I'll go with it. <laughs> Leslie, I believe that magpies always stay in pairs, so you should always salute a single magpie as it's lost its partner. So very unlucky. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of folklore to it, isn't it? And that makes absolute sense, Leslie, that does. Uh, Teresa, are the weird looks from the people or the magpies? <laughs> Probably from both, I would imagine. <laughs> oh, Kay's carried on the thing. Look, five for silver, six for gold, seven for secret, never to be told. Used to sing the theme tune to the TV program. Yes, when we were children. Magpie, yep, definitely. Um, definitely. So there are lots of, there's lots of different folklore, and I have got some folklore bits to uh in part with you in a while but whatever feathers you find they have their own very special magic to them when i find a feather i do bring it home and pop it in the freezer overnight just because there can be little insects and nasties lurking in there obviously keep the feathers away from the food in your freezer but by putting them in the freezer overnight you can um, clean them basically make sure there's no nasties hiding in them uh, alternatively, you can place, place the feathers in a solution of five parts warm water, one part vinegar and one part witch hazel. Leave them to soak for 24 hours and then dry them by laying out flat on a towel, which is wonderful, but far too complicated for me. So I just chuck them in the freezer. Yeah, whatever works for you, whatever works for you. Uh, Jane says, when you salute, I think you're supposed to say good morning, Captain, or you can just spit. It's funny, isn't it? All the different folklores that people are brought up with uh, and, you know, get used to, all passed down. Lovely. Uh, Christine says, yes, when I find a feather, I usually put them in the steam of the kettle. Yes, that works too, doesn't it? It's the heat, the heat and the steam cleans them. So, yeah, do make sure that you clean them before you start working with them because they can have some nasties in them. Um, they bring, feathers bring, magical properties of change, focus, communication, concentration and wishes. But also the feather will carry the magical properties of that particular bird that it came from. And if you work with colour magic, you can bring the colour magic in as well. Um, Kay, thanks about cleaning because I popped them in a jar in my conservatory until now. I think they're fine, Kay, unless you're going to be handling them lots and working with them, then I, you know, because I do work with them a lot in magic uh, by handling them, I just like to make sure they're a little bit clean of any nasties. Uh, good morning, John. All we get are the big corvids around here, apart from the raven, and my wife tickles the cat's nose with cold feathers. <laughs> Loads of them around here. Yes, we are by the ocean, so we get lots. It's the small birds that are struggling. Sparrow came back after five years. I must admit, we do, although we get a lot of seagulls, the odd magpie, lots of pigeons, we do get lots of sparrows uh, and the odd starlings as well, a few starlings on occasion as well. Uh, and a blackbird. We have blackbirds that nest in a neighbour's hedge. So we are quite lucky with that respect. But I think because I'm in terraced housing, we get a lot of cats. So uh, the bird population has to be very wary. <laughs> Kay would love to find an eagle feather. That would be my ultimate feather treasure. Um, good luck, Kay. I do wish you luck. I would never be able to find an eagle feather because not in the in the edge of the city in England, very, very unlikely to find an eagle feather. So it does, you know, it does matter where you live as to what feathers you will find, obviously. Um, Teresa says, magpies, it's true they generally mate for life. So if only one and no others nearby likely, then it's lost its mate. They'll sometimes take another if they've lost their mate, but generally pair for life. I love them. Yeah, they are fantastic, aren't they? So that makes sense, doesn't it? If you see one, then it's unlucky because it's likely lost his mate. So um, beautiful birds, beautiful birds. Maria, I'm also finding the little white feathery ones in the woods. Um, 
beautiful gifts. Zenia loves starlings. I always think of starlings as the kind of rowdy, bully teenagers. <laughs> Whenever I put out fat in the garden, the starlings descend on it and all the other birds disappear. Uh, yes, Jane says we don't get a lot of eagles in Romford either. No. <laughs> <laughs> Xenia loves the parakeets in London parks and loved to feed them never found a feather though I didn't know there were parakeets in London parks that's fascinating fascinating Willow says song I'm not going to sing it cauldron of changes feather on the bone means as the feather leaves the bone the spirit leaves the body once you cross the rainbow bridge fabulous thank you for sharing that Willow um, so, yeah, they are so magical and I do work with them quite a lot. They are, of course, the element of air. Excellent for using uh, as a symbolic representation of the element of air. Um, there couldn't be a, a more element of air thing unless you sort of captured the wind in a jar. If you are gifted a feather, do make a connection with it. It could be a message for you. It might be from spirit. Uh, some do see uh, particularly white feathers as gifts from the angels, but it might be a reminder that you need to make a conscious effort to get out into nature. Um, some believe the gift of feathers is a link to the world of fairy. It could be a message linked to the particular bird that's left you the feather. So you really need to connect with it to see what, why it's come to you. It may be a message. It may be from spirit. It may be from fairy. But it may just be a, a prompt that you need to do something. Uh, and it also might be that you need to work with that particular animal, that bird, um, or that you need to work with the feather in some magic. So you will need to connect with it to... Uh, see what it's got for you. Christine, I once got given a handmade prayer fan with the feathers of an eagle owl. Oh, beautiful. I bet that's stunning. Okay, I hate seeing a patch of feathers on my lawn. It's either a bird fight or a cat fight. Yes, I have found piles of feather in the garden before now, <clears throat> where a cat's obviously had an argument with a bird. Yes. Rachel says, starlings are like a gang of bad boys in leather jackets. They are, aren't they? They absolutely are. That's exactly how I see them. Uh, Caroline says, in Wales, we used to find the most beautiful red kite and buzzard feathers and once found the most amazing tiny jay feather. Beautiful, so we don't get any of those uh, around here <clears throat> because I'm in the city, really, so we don't get buzzards or anything like that. Do see them when we're out on our travels. Uh, pheasant feathers I found occasionally as well when we've been out on our travels. Good morning, Eve. Jane says we have a big crowd of parakeets here. They fly over making a racket, and I've either not found any. I've not found any green feathers either. They must have very secure follicles. <laughs> obviously, obviously that I don't know. Perhaps they have a particular time for molting. Jane, I don't know anything about parakeets. Uh, Christine says, if you go to bird sanctuaries, they sometimes give you feathers if you ask them. See, myself and the Kitchen Witch Posse went to um, a bird sanctuary, not last year, year before. Yeah. <laughs> and we did. We were scouring the floor and the edges of the cages trying to look for feathers. I don't think we were overly successful, but we didn't think to ask, actually. Uh, Dawn said, when my Siamese cat died, I was very upset and was sitting out in the garden. A white feather just drifted down onto my knee. That seems to be the case with little white feathers and messages from spirit. They do just turn up like that. Good morning, Karen. <laughs> Overslept. Well, it's a bank holiday. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> John says, at our allotment, the piles of feathers are there because of the sparrow hawk. Yeah, it's, it's nature, isn't it? It's the cycle of nature. It is the food chain. Um, all of the animals have to feed themselves. And, you know, there's a pecking order, isn't there? <laughs> pecking order, no pun intended. <laughs> it is. It's a cycle of life, isn't it? It certainly is. So I do, I must admit, if I'm looking for an, uh, a representation from nature for uh, air, the element of air, then it, my feather is a go-to, really. But I think as well, if you find a feather, give it some thought. What were you thinking about? just before you found it. What's going on in your life at the moment? 
uh, what was your initial thought when you saw it uh, or what words popped into your head as you saw it? Any of these questions can help you determine what the reason is, or it might just be a gift for you to keep to use later. You might pick it up without thinking anything. And then a few days later, you need a feather for something. So um, give it a little bit of thought, really, um, to see what it means to you and what it might mean to you in the future. Xenia says, considering the amounts of parakeets I've seen, it's a bit odd that I've never found a green feather. Reason for that, Xenia, where we do reverse the <laughs> why is it that parakeet hasn't ever gifted you with anything? Uh, look up the meanings of parakeets, look up magical properties of parakeets and see what it means to you. Uh, Caroline says, yes, often bird sanctuaries sell fallen feathers to raise funds. Yep, that makes perfect sense. Uh, good morning, Petronella. Just tuned in. We do not have a day off at my workplace, so at my desk listening to you. Oh, that's rude. <laughs> not having a day off. <laughs> um, hopefully it's a quiet day for you, Petronella. Sue says, hubby drives a lorry. I get all sorts of birds of prey, peacocks, swans. Fabulous. Fabulous. We are. I will talk about roadkill in a second. I don't know whether that was linked to your lorry, but, you know. <laughs> uh, okay, definitely going to check it out. Yes, do. You know, I there. it's all with most things. When nature gifts you something, it's going to have a personal meaning to you that might not mean the same to the next person. So give it some thought. Have a think about, you know, what it means. But feathers have long associations with omens, with myths, with folklore. And the colours also have meaning. So uh, black, if you find a black feather, um, there are traditional meanings, but always, always go with your intuition. So I will relay. Here we go. Black can mean bad luck, uh, was often thought to mean death. But I also think it can be a warning to bring in protection. I think if you find a black feather, it could be that you need to bring protection or that you need to, you know, someone's gossiping about you or you just need to have a little bit of think about closing in the the protective gates um but it can also you know if it's from a blackbird or a raven or a crow or something then think about the magic of it because obviously if a witch finds a black feather it's probably going to be to do with magic and the occult i think so anyway uh good morning donna okay magpie feathers remind me of labradorite yes they've got that kind of sheen to it hasn't it Zenny has lots of pigeons. They chase away the smaller birds. Yeah, they do. They do. Uh, Jane, always sad when birds get killed on the road, but pheasants are, oh, yes, pheasants are so damn stupid with traffic. Yeah, not really blessed, are they, with brains? <laughs> but, you know, pheasant against a car, it, it obviously doesn't know what it is, and it's not a happy ending, bless it. So brown feathers, thinking of pheasants, brown feathers are... The colour of brown to me is home, it's hearth, it's grounding, uh, can also mean friendship. Grey feathers, peace. To me, that's always peace. Black and white feathers, and we're thinking magpie here, averting trouble or changes coming, which is a lot of what magpie um, deals with. White feathers often said to be the sign of angels or faith and hope. Yellow feather, although I'm not sure when you'd find a yellow feather. I have got some actually. I have got some coloured feathers here. These are craft feathers. Um, let's have a look. What else we've got here? Red ones. There's an orange one. These are craft feathers. They've obviously been dyed, but I have a box of them that we use in uh, when we have our craft days. Uh, cheap and cheerful, but work really well with the magic of element of air, but also you can bring in color magic with them, which is brilliant. So a yellow feather is success or acknowledgement that you're on the right path. A pink feather, again, I'm not sure, unless, you're, unless you've got flamingos near you, <laughs> pink feathers are love. Blue feathers, a spiritual connection or awakening and inspiration. A red feather is good fortune or passion. And a green feather is health, healing or prosperity. Um, so that's if you work with colour magic, then 
feathers are, are brilliant for that, particularly the dyed ones, because you can get them in all different colours and they're really useful for working magic. Um, Xenia, as for black feathers, I also love blackbirds so much. I enjoy their singing. Yes, we have we have a nesting couple in a neighbor's garden and they sing but they also shout if there's if there's if the dog's out there or for a cat's out there they do shout in the garden as well jane says yes pheasants like to wrap themselves around people's wheel arches they do unfortunately uh, christine is has a book called birds divine messengers by andrea wainsbury thank you for that recommendation senia also polarities of magpie black and white see the polarities balance them yep Absolutely. Good morning, Alex. Sue, I made a witch's ladder with craft feathers. It looks beautiful. Yes, witch's ladders with feathers are brilliant. There is a video on my YouTube channel of how to make a witch's ladder if you'd like to give it a go. Sarah says canaries and budgies escaped. Yes, I think that's where you'll get the brightly coloured ones from, isn't it? Canaries, budgies and parrots if they've escaped. Jane, no, we don't get a lot of flamingos in Romford. No, we don't get a lot of flamingos in Portsmouth either. <laughs> Kay says, green is Angel Raphael. Thank you, Kay. I don't work with the angels, so um, thank you for that information. Uh, Willow, my mother always finds feathers when there's a big life event happening. A message from her spirit family to say they are, are there. That's very comforting. Brilliant. Yes, I think they are often a, a message from spirit, aren't they? So uh, it has to have meaning to you, definitely. Uh, so each each bird has different meanings, obviously. Uh, crow feathers are excellent for wisdom, knowledge and helping us to let go of unwanted thoughts, feelings or negative energy. White swan feathers hold purification, cleansing, beauty and positive energy. Black swan feathers can be used to dispel negative energy. Hawk feathers bring the magic of the hunt, which makes perfect sense. Uh, magpie feathers bring magic, divination skills, wisdom and change. Pigeon feathers, peace, love and communication. Blackbird feathers bring poetry, inspiration, music and a stronger connection with meditation. Blue jay feathers bring joy, happiness, and light. Um, and white feathers, obviously, whatever they are, messages from divine spirit or angels. So they've all got their own individual meanings as well, if you can identify the type of, of bird that the feather came from. Aloha, Lisa. Uh, Xenia has a blackbird male that has learned our police siren and often runs a police operation. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Sue says they have black swans in door at Dawlish. We don't. I don't see them very often anymore. Black swans, but they are beautiful creatures. Um, good morning, Teresa. So I use feathers as charms, amulets, talismans in spell pouches. Uh, they are a ready-made fetish, which is a charm with magical powers. We will talk about that in a minute, and they can be fashioned into smudge fans, healing sticks. Uh, prayer sticks and wands as well. Um, they are really, really versatile for all kinds of spell working. Uh, excuse me, jumping past. Just getting there. So Maria loves black swans or swans. Yeah, they are beautiful creatures, aren't they? They are beautiful creatures. Um, so I was lucky enough to be gifted, and I am going to give a warning again, magpie wing coming on the screen, just in case you don't want to have a look at it. I have several magpie wings. They are the entire wings. They are all still joined. They are the entire wings together. And I actually have several of them that I have been gifted. Um, they are from Roadkill. Uh, I don't... Um, I don't advocate going out and bopping a bird on the head just because you want the feathers. Uh-uh, no. <laughs> if you catch it. <laughs> um, but roadkill is uh, very, very useful for getting things like the wings. I've actually got a skull as well that came from magpie. But it was roadkill. I have a friend that picks up roadkill off the side of the road, obviously, and treats all of the parts in a way of honouring the bird. There are certain 
do's and don'ts if you find roadkill. Uh, if it makes your stomach churn, uh, <laughs> let's, you know, if you're squeamish, leave it. Um, if you do see an, a bird or an animal um, on the side of the road, it can be preserved if it's still in good condition. It is nice to give a blessing, I think. If you see some an animal on the side of the road that's been killed, do say a little blessing for it, for the life that it's had. Just a few words to say, you know, to the, to the earth or to the sky, thanking the animal for its part in the cycle of life. There are particular things. I mean, if it's covered in maggots and yucky, then push it perhaps over onto the verge so that um, other animals and Mother Nature can do its thing. But if it is still in good condition, then it can be used. The wings can be used, the legs can be used, the bones, the skeleton, the skull can all be preserved it, as a way of honouring the animal. I haven't done it fully myself. I have dealt with the skull. Um, I cleaned that with uh, by burying it in the garden first and remembering where you put it so that all the worms and insects could do their thing. And then I finished it off by cleaning it with bleach uh, or peroxide. Um, but I must admit, actually chopping off the wings and stuff is not my area of expertise. There are ways of doing it. You can Google it. You do need to preserve them properly because otherwise it will go mouldy and yucky. Uh, some of the wings that I had, I know, were put under a huge baker's oven uh, to dry out completely. Uh, and that's how they were preserved. Do Google it. There's lots of instructions on the Internet if you want to do it yourself. There are ways of looking after it all, but you don't want it to go yucky. So it does need to be done properly. Um, good morning, Lizzie. Jane, just written a spiel in my journal about how clever birds are. Heard one singing a tune that was in the charts when I was a kid. <laughs> And another one imitating their phone. <laughs> Excellent. Lizzie predominantly finds black feathers, have done for years. Perhaps I need to engage more with magic and occult. Black are all definitely linked to the occult and working magic, but also protection, Lizzie. I do associate black uh, feathers with bringing in protection. Jane says, can magpie wings be used for smudging? I use them for smudging all the time, Jane. Wings and feathers, you can make a fan out of feathers as well. For wafting smoke, absolutely brilliant. Uh, Christine has a barn owl wing that was roadkill and I treasure it, beautiful. Uh, Maria, yes, I use a crow one for wafting the smoke. They are, feathers are absolutely perfect, perfect for making into fans to waft the smoke when you're doing cleansing, brilliant. Uh, Kay says roadkill is an acceptable way to get feathers or wings, I think. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the, the death of the animal is out of our hands. So I think it is a nice way of honouring the animal, preserving it and keeping the spirit of it going. Uh, Karen says, I always do a blessing if I see anything dead and ask it to be cradled in the arms of the mother. Perfect. Yes, I do as well. If I see any any kind of roadkill, I always say a blessing. Uh, Kay, I banged into a deer once and felt awful, but the driver behind me stopped too and stopped me from looking. He did say, I saw what happened and you had no other option. It happens. It happens. My husband hit, hit a deer with the van as well once. Um, it is horrible. But yes, in those situations, there is nothing you can do other than, I think, make sure that if the animal is suffering, then you need to call someone to deal with it. Um, yeah, it is unavoidable, unavoidable sometimes. Uh, animals in the wild and cars don't mix, don't mix at all. Uh, Eve says, I collect feathers and skulls. I get roadkill, keep skulls and feathers. My kitchen shelf's full of little boxes of skulls, bones and cat kills. Yes, lots of mouse and rat heads. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I have got the magpie skull. It's downstairs at the moment. It's a bit delicate. But yes, definitely amazing way to... Uh, honour the animal. Uh, Maria, it would break my heart dismantling a bird. I would just bury it. Th that's fine, Maria. Absolutely fine. You have to do what you're comfortable doing. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't. I mean, I have done things like skinning rabbits and things. But um, I yes, I think the actual taking apart of the bird would I would find quite uncomfortable. So, yeah, just if you're not comfortable with it, then 
just just deal with it by burying it and saying a blessing. Uh, John, I got into this pagan and witchcraft because my daughter, who is an auntie on the other side of the family, are witches. Um, yeah, we we all you know we all uh, we all have our ways of finding the pathway. It comes in different ways. Um, he works with deities. Yes, see, there's a lot of deities that are birds that are connected with deities. Yes. Um, Every one that John's worked with has had a bird associated with them. I do. A lot of them do. A lot of them do have birds associated with them. Uh, Lizzie, I do link black feathers to my magical practice as well as a warning to look out. But I do have to be careful as there are a lot of corvids here and they are, and they cause molt. There is that. Let's remember this, that not everything is a message or a warning or, or ah! <laughs> birds molt. They do. It happens, you know, or cats get hold of birds or, you know, birds clash with cars. It happens. Not everything is an omen or a sign or you have to judge for yourself and trust your intuition if you find a feather as to what its meaning is. Sometimes it's just a feather. Pick it up, take it home, keep it. You'll use it later. Definitely trust your intuition on it. So Jane found a beautiful sparrow hawk by the road once, so buried it in the garden. Yeah, that's a very good option. Um, do remember as well, though, that some other wild animals do eat roadkill. So if you don't want to pick it up and take it home, move it to the verge so that the animals can safely get it. Uh, Sue, I remember when I was catering college and they brought in a whole pig to join. Yes, I have done that as well. I did live on a pig farm as a teenager so, and we did uh, butcher some of our own meat. So, yeah, I have I have done that kind of thing. But um, you have to be comfortable with it. And if you are preserving things to use, like bird wings, you have to do it properly. You have to know what you're doing because you don't want it to go mouldy and yucky. Um, <laughs> Charlotte has five parrots, so spend my life surrounded by feathers. Beautiful coloured feathers, though, Charlotte. You're very lucky. <laughs> now, there are there is a uh, lot of folklore surrounding feathers. The interesting one that I found was um, the White Feather Society. You may have you may be familiar with the sign of a white feather. During World War One, a group of women formed the White Feather Society. Uh, they would present a white feather to any man that would not join the military and fight, showing him that they believed him to be a coward. And I had heard of that, actually. It apparently came from cockfights where a cockerel with white tail feathers would turn away from their opponent and show their white tail feathers during the fight and were considered to be cowardly. So that's white feathers. If you're presented with a white feather could be that you're not being brave about something too um, but again you have to go with your own tuition um willows oh no hang on let me ugh. sometimes uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> all the comments is zooming off the screen let me just jump back for a second Jane, every summer the bird song goes quiet for a few weeks. It's because the birds are molting and they hide away because they can't fly so efficiently when they're waiting for feathers to grow back and they feel vulnerable. So, that, yes, they have their molting seasons, don't they? So there will be times when you'll find more feathers than, than others. Uh, Lizzie rescued a buzzard once that was stunned in the middle of the road, wrapped it in some cloth and popped it in the footwell of the passenger side. Then it started to come round as it got close to the vets. Put my foot down, got there, and the vet got it out safely. Kept it in the practice for a while, and then he phoned me that that the bird was being released. Amazing spectacle. Yeah, so proud of my action to see the buzzard fly away. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Christine says, I sometimes hold a feather when meditating. to get. It's great to fly with them. Yes, perfect for doing that because you connect with that element of air and the spirit of the bird, and it really does help you. Meditation, excellent. Rachel says, her husband found a blackbird skeleton under the floor of my studio when he insulated the floor last summer. We kept the skull, and it's now in my magical curio cabinet after being in the freezer for a while, yes. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Fantastic. What a lovely gift. 
Uh, Willow, could you give an example of using a feather in magic? How would it enhance the magic? Certainly. Well, obviously, feathers can, you can just, as Christine says, hold on to it and connect with it to help you meditating because it will give you that flight. I use feathers sometimes in ritual to when I'm calling in the element of air. So I will use it as a symbol for that. Um, I've also got here and I will show you. I use it like I use any other ingredient in, in magic, really. If I'm doing candle magic and I'm putting herbs on, if I want to bring in the spirit of the animal or the element of air, then I will place a feather beside the candle as well. I add feathers to spell pouches uh, for the properties of the bird or for properties of the element of air. Um, but I also make a fetish. I've got one here that I made. If you can see it. This is a fetish or just a type of fetish. It is a hagstone tied together with two feathers and a magpie foot. And that's a fetish just tied together. It's an example of fetish. So I use feathers quite a lot in a, fet in a fetish. So a fetish is possibly from a Portuguese word, fetico, meaning charm or sorcery. So essentially, it's an item filled with magic. And you'll, you'll find versions of them in most cultures. So a fetish can be an object that has a connection to a supernatural to the supernatural with the item. The item would re represent the divine or the spirit world, or some have a spirit that resides within the fetish. Other fetishes, fetish, fetishes, <laughs> not easy to say, are natural objects, which is what I work with. Any items that have been imbued with magical intent. So a fetish can be designed or carried to, or worn to bring protection. Love, prosperity, luck, it can be used to protect against evil, whilst some are created to bring curses upon your enemies. It's entirely up to you. Fetish can be anything. It can be a puppet, a carved image, animal bones, an ornament or a spell pouch filled with herbs and you know more unsavoury items such as bodily fluids. But I like to use feathers, leaves, twigs and stones. That's my kind of fetish. All natural items I work with. You can, if it is your want, trap a spirit into a fetish and bind it into the object. I would suggest you do some serious research first before you work with that area. It's not something I would do. And if you do, it needs to be done with great care and great thought. And I would only suggest doing it if you are a very experienced practitioner. However, because the spirit you bind into the fetish might have a completely different idea about what's right or wrong. <laughs> it could be, and usually is, completely unreliable. Um, but you've bound it and trapped it against its will into, you know, a feather or a pebble or an ornament. So you'd understandably be upset about it too. Uh, some spirit-filled fetishes can also be dangerous and very draining to your own energy. So uh, be mindful of that. However, not going to be a drama, spirit, drama queen about it, but if you want to just work with the natural items and make your own fetish, uh, it is about taking items, putting them together and sending your energy into them, your intent into them. Uh, you can... Uh, add essential oil to them. You can dress them in essential oil or blessed water. You can pass it through incense smoke. You can add corresponding herbs, all sorts of things to add to the energy of it. But once your fetish is created, it can just be a, a, a feather on its own. Uh, you need to activate it. So you need to imbue it with the magical intent or the energy of the deity or the spirit or the animal that uh, you want to work with it. So it's about flicking a switch, really turning it on. Um, every item obviously has its own natural spirit energy, but it's about activating it. So once your fetish is set up, it is essentially a living thing. So you tell it what magic you want it to work. You tell it what energy you want it to, to work with and you 
ask it to do what you need it to do. Um, so it then essentially becomes a living item. So you do have to feed it. You do have to look after it. Uh, and that's when you add the essential oils or the blessed waters or uh, pay it attention, really. It can be all sorts of things, bones, feathers, stones, uh, even things like poppets and witch bottles and things. They're all fetishes. They're all charms. Um, so all the time that you pay attention and keep feeding it the energy, it will keep working for you. Um, so that's a fetish. That's the main way that I do work with feathers is by imbuing them with magic, with my intent uh, and kicking their and energy into action to work for me. But feathers can be useful, all sorts of things. Um, very, very useful, very useful. Let me just got some more messages here. Teresa says, we found a nut hatch dead last weekend. We buried it under the tree. We found it under and put a small tone, stone on top. The kids put flowers on it and some cones and said a little prayer. Oh, lovely, perfect, perfect way of dealing with it. And all the comments have jumped up again. <laughs> uh, Kay says, this chat about birds and bearers reminds me of my budgie that died. And my dad popped him in an after eight mint box as a coffin. <laughs> Perfect. Buried him in the garden. He popped a coffin on his shoulder and sang the funeral march too. Oh, bless him. Bless him. Good morning, Rhiannon. You don't have to apologise for being late. Uh, Lani, I've always thought of small feathers as in the ones that are underneath the bird as a symbol of new beginnings as they are new feathers. So if I see any on the ground, I use them in any magic associated with new beginnings. Perfect. Perfect. Senia loves my fetish. Uh, actually, this is one I've had for a long time uh, and I just keep working with it. I keep adding the energy to it. I keep prompting it. I keep recharging it uh, and it works brilliantly. Uh, they are really, really useful to work with. As I say, they can move all sorts of things. Uh, Jane says, I sometimes find bits of Stone Age tools in my garden. Can I use these as fetishes? At the moment, they're on my ancestor altar. They would work brilliantly, Jane. You can use anything to create into a fetish. They would because they would carry the energy of the ancestors. Um, perfect, I would say. Uh, Christine says crafts are great with feathers. I use them all the time. I stick them on the edge of my witch's drum. Yes, they make perfect and for tying into bunches on your staff um, or making into a smudge wand. So tying feathers onto a, a piece of stick. If you tie them round or tie them across in a fan shape, they make brilliant uh, fans to off smoke for cleansing. Uh, John, the Norsemen used to hang those in trees before battle for luck. Not sure if other cultures did it as well. Fetishes, yeah, lots of cultures use them. Lots and lots of cultures use them across the globe for all sorts of intents, for protection and for luck and all sorts of things. Uh, Xenia, I would be very upset too if someone would trap me for somewhere for their purposes. Wouldn't have a good end for them. Yeah, I never advise um, trapping spirits into anything. Um, not advisable but you know everyone makes your own choices um sarah in the kitchen in amongst starlings there's a robin holding his own oh good for the robin <laughs> good for the robin i saw we don't get robins in air garden but my dad has one that comes into his garden and actually lets him feed him out of his hand it's very very um tame i was actually at in Glastonbury once at the Chalice Well a few years back now, actually sitting round the Chalice Well and a little robin came and hopped up on the wall beside me. Very, very magical. Um, but I think robins are magical anyway. Um, I always see robins as new beginnings, really. Uh, but don't discount anything, uh, any kind of feather or like pigeons, which you get all the time, or seagulls if you live near the ocean. They're all magical. Uh, chicken feathers, uh, brilliant to use as well uh, for all kinds of magic. Uh, chicken, I think, particularly is all about fertility um, and sacrifice as well, chickens. Um, motherhood, 
rebirth, nurturing, abundance, broodiness, fussing. <laughs> Think about the actual bird and how it acts. Think about the folklore that's associated with it, how it lives. And then you get the magical properties for all of the feathers, uh, the individual feathers. Uh, Jane says, I love the way robins always turn up when people are digging so they can grab the worms. Blackbirds tend to do that a lot too. Uh, Xenia says, robins are very brave. They are also very territorial. Yes, they are very territorial. Uh, Sue has a few wrens in the garden at the moment. Beautiful. Xenia says, chickens are awesome. Yeah, I do like chickens. They are funny. They make me laugh. Um, Caroline had a wonderful, very close encounter with a Romit chalice. Well, might have been the same one, Caroline. <laughs> they are very territorial, so it could well be. <laughs> Rhiannon, we got a crow brought into work very poorly and a sad end. I was with him all the way, holding him close to me whilst he went to sleep. Before I put him in cold storage, he sent me out sent out to me purple lights. I took some of his flight feathers and said my final, final words. Beautiful, beautiful. Xenia says chickens are also very brave. You won't mess with an angry rooster. Actually, if you think about chickens and you think about the cockerel or the rooster, there are different energies between the two. So chickens are definitely about fertility and motherhood, nurturing, comfort. Um, but cockerels are more, they've got that more powerful masculine energy. So they are about um, sexuality, sacrifice, um, being a bit eccentric as well, I think, enthusiastic, but also the cockerel carries really strong psychic ability kind of energy to it um, and a bit of humour as well, I think. So I think about it as well because quite often in the bird world, the males look very different to the females, even something like the blackbird. The blackbird is black with, and the female blackbird is brown. It's rude, actually. Peacocks. It's the male peacock that's got all the big showy feathers the poor old female peacock all brown so think about the different birds uh, and the different genders of the birds as well because they will carry different energies with them lani says one of the teaching assistants i work with has chickens and she often brings in eggs oh brilliant fantastic and of course chickens eggs real fertility real cycle of life kind of magic Jane finds it hard to make meaningful eye contact with chickens. <laughs> Sarah says, yes, Portugal's symbol is a rooster. Um, Caroline, my friend, has been slowly introducing her hens to her two terriers. The hens are definitely in charge. Yes, I bet they are. I bet they are. Um, Kay says, a gifted friend has made me years ago a medicine shield like a wheel with a painted eagle on it with feathers and bells on and a piece of coral. She also made a joystick, which is an arrow decorated with ribbons and feathers, but also a leather pouch, paper inside, and you place all your hopes of joy inside. That sounds fantastic. Feathers are really, really useful in all kinds of magic um, for decoration as well and to add energy to, to things you've made. Um, definitely, very, really, really useful. Denise, we bred some chicks for my nephews. They look like baby dinosaurs. <laughs> Sis had a difficult time explaining that their auntie wasn't breeding dinosaurs. <laughs> well, there is a connection, isn't there? My son will explain much better than I can. But yes, uh, chickens are quite strongly linked with dinosaurs. They have kept an awful lot of their dinosaur DNA, apparently. Um, so there you go. That's why they look like baby dinosaurs. Uh, Nancy, we used to have a rooster that would watch out for women and chase them, <laughs> not interested in men. <laughs> no, I think that's generally the life of a rooster, isn't it? <laughs> that's really all they're there for. <laughs> so do keep an eye out and do have a think about the feathers, uh, what they mean to you personally, whether it is just the whole element of air type of feather um or the particular type of bird that it's come from or the color of the feather what you were thinking about at the time what's going on in your life but do work with the magic they are absolutely brilliant whether it is as a fetish or whether you do make a smoke wafting fan from the feathers or whether you just get hold of 
um, I've got some brilliant colours here, um, whether you do get hold of some of these dyed ones. Um, they're absolutely brilliant for working magic with, for sewing onto spell pouches, for tying onto wands, onto staffs. So much magic to them. Um, Lizzie is thinking of making a poppet with feathers. Just have to work out the mechanics. Yeah, I guess it would work. It would work, particularly if you've got some big feathers, not the peacock feathers possibly. Oh, no, that would be the face, wouldn't it? And then you could tie feathers onto it. Yeah, definitely. Oh, we'd like to see photos of that when you're done, Lizzie. Definitely like to see photos of that. Christine, my uncle once had a crow pet and it lived for 15 years in the garden. Yeah, that cr corvids in particular are really intelligent, aren't they? They do. They are very, very intelligent. Uh, Zenia says chickens are one step away from T-Rex. Yeah, there is a very strong connection with dinosaurs, apparently. Yes, Caroline says always worried about the ethical origins of the cheap dyed feathers. I've had these for years. Um, I bought a big bag of them somewhere and I have had them for years. I'm not sure I would buy them now without checking where they came from. I mean, obviously, they are a leftover from the food industry. But for me, if uh, if you can find a local farm that does um, chicken production or turkeys or any kind of bird uh, and they'll happy to give you the feathers that would be an option yes it might be worth checking out the the ethical um sourcing of your feathers these days just to um just to make sure uh, lizzie i want to use it for healing for myself and my daughter i think feathers would be perfect for it lizzie absolutely perfect uh, maria birds are connected to dinosaurs they are um chickens in particular they do have very yes they do have a very very strong connection uh, Jane, Russell, our resident rook, isn't so intelligent. He spends ages pulling twigs off her elder tree, then drops them. There's probably a reason for it, Jane. He's probably got some really important reason for doing it. <laughs> You'll probably find he's eating the insects or something. Um, they do tend to do things for a reason. Uh, Xenia says, geese are fabulous watchdogs, never mess with an angry goose. No, they do get, they are very good, aren't they? I know a lot of farms that uh, keep geese as um, guard dogs, basically. Um, yeah, you wouldn't want, and you weren't, not, wouldn't want to mess with swans either. They can get quite grumpy too, aren't they? So feathers, absolutely brilliant magical item to work with. And generally, if you find them or are gifted them, they are free. Carry the energy of the bird, carry the energy of the element of earth. Um, Kay says, reminded that feathers are put into Native American hair because they help to connect them with the spirit and the spirit of that bird. They do. I mean, you've only got to pick up the feather and connect with it and you will be connected to the spirit of that bird. It's why I keep the, the magpie wings because I work with magpie quite a lot. So the wings, the feathers help me connect with the spirit of that bird. I was actually gifted these peacock feathers. Um, they were on a top hat that I was gifted, actually. <laughs> um, and it does. It really helps you to connect with the uh, with the energy of the bird. And even when you've got your fetish, you'll find if you make a fetish with feathers, uh, this one is actually a crow feather and a seagull feather. Uh, no, crow feather and a pigeon feather, sorry. Uh, and I've got the magpie foot in there as well. And it really does carry the energy of those birds, um, which is brilliant because it gives you so much to work with. Uh, Rhiannon finds feathers on my walk through the woods and the farmer's field at the back of my house. Yes, woodlands, obviously brilliant places to find them. But I mean, I live on the edge of the city and I still find feathers. So you, you can find them wherever you are. Uh, Caroline, my sister has a resident blackbird who had big white patches. The other blackbirds shun him. Yeah, the the bird world aren't very good with um, differences, are they? They really aren't. Christine says, go to river, you find lovely duck feathers and swans too. Yes, I've been gifted swan feathers by um, going down near the, the river. Uh, Xenia says, in Hamburg, where we have official swans, there's a law that forbids offending swans, apart, of course, from killing or hurting them. 
uh, yeah, in England, swans are protected by the Queen, basically. You're not allowed to upset them at all, um, let, let alone hurting them. Yeah, and rightly so. <laughs> uh jane says working with magpie feathers could help in our charity shop treasure hunts <laughs> definitely uh, christine i was once told the difference between a crow and a raven was to do with their pinion feathers a crow has six pinions and a raven has seven so the difference is a matter of opinion <laughs> oh that was a very bad dad joke christine <laughs> very bad <laughs> Uh, so yes, Sue says, they say peacock feathers are bad luck because of the evil eye. Rubbish, I've had them in my home for years. Me too, Sue. There is, isn't there, there is a lot of folklore about bringing peacock feathers into the house. You're not supposed to because it brings bad luck. But I think they are beautiful and glamorous and uh, definitely well worth working with. I've had them in my home for years as well um, and not had any problems with them. So um I, peacock is peacock feathers bring dignity and self-esteem really good with for working for self-confidence also protection because of the evil eye patience kindness compassion luck uh, i think they're also really good for connection to the underworld because they are peacock feathers are associated with a lot of the gods of the underworld too so they're really good for journeying to the underworld to make that connection um Kay says, so do the birds even believe in the old curse of the white feather? Yes, they must do. Uh, Caroline, the queen owns all the swans in the kingdom. She does. Um, that's why they're protected by her, isn't it? And I, they should be protected, absolutely. Uh, Jane, it's supposed to be unlucky to bring lilac blossom indoors, but it smells so gorgeous. There's lots of things, isn't there? There's lots of folklore about plants and things like that, definitely. Christine says, muggles don't like feathers of the peacock, but witches love them. <laughs> we'll have them. We'll have all the peacock feathers. <laughs> uh, in Egypt, the evil eyes for protection. Strange how different cultures change the meanings. Yes, it is funny, isn't it? Uh, it is funny how things are. Um... We've got a local cafe, fabulous cafe, run by very, very lovely Turkish people. And I noticed they have one of the blue glass uh, evil eyes hanging up in their cafe I assume for protection yeah it's funny isn't it uh, Caroline says it's heartbreaking yeah the poor poor bird poor bird we'll, we'll have to look after him instead Caroline <laughs> uh, Karen says we have a resident magpie the only time he leaves is when he's minding a nest he's been around us for nine years yeah they do seem to be quite um, loyal don't they Maria says it's supposed to be bad to have a peacock tattoo. Well, that's me stuff then, Maria. <laughs> I have one up here somewhere. There's a peacock feather on here on her hat. You can't even see it there. My hair's all in the way. There is a peacock. There it is up there. I have pe a lady's head here with a top hat on, and it's got peacock feathers in it. <laughs> so I like to buck the trend. <laughs> um, but there you go. Uh, OG Dios, yes, thank you for making me pronounce that, Jane. Evil eye. <laughs> um, Caroline, in Malta, they have the blue eye painted in their traditional fishing boats. Yes, I noticed they have the blue eyes in Greece as well when we visited. Uh, Lani says, Zoe wears an evil eye necklace to protect her at school and the nasty gossips that go around. Yeah, it's funny how different cultures um, work with it, isn't it? So I have waffled for. Like, yes, Kay says, stick with the Egyptian belief. I will. Uh, it works for me. <laughs> I had it because it just happened. I like top hats, and my top hat had peacock feathers on it. <laughs> so that's where the tattoo came from. Um, Maria says that went around the tattoo community a few years back. Yeah, I, I like to buck trends. <laughs> yes, Xenia says, white crows, albino crows, are shunned by the others because they look different. It was written on a plate in a zoo where they kept a white crow. They won't release it into the wild for that reason. Yes, you know, the wild, the animals in the wild are not tolerant of things like that, unfortunately. So I have waffled for ages and there's gardening to be done. <laughs> I've got da more dahlia corns to plant and some plants to move. So, yes, it's gardening time. Uh, thank you so much, as always, everyone, for joining me.
feathers do work with them they are absolutely fascinating and generally free and connected so much with natural nature's magic really really fascinating to work with uh, thank you so much as always for joining me it's been an absolute pleasure again and all your insights and your comments and interacting with me is absolutely brilliant and i thank you very much for that so have a fantastic long weekend everyone uh, and take care and i will catch up with you all next week <laughs>